qualified, professional, and compassionate doctors talking real solutions to real health problems. Good evening, our beloved viewers. Welcome to our favorite show, uh, The Doc Talk Show. My name is Dr. Joseph Gavin Nyanzi, and I am your host tonight. Uh, with me in studio is uh, Professor Roda Wanyenze, one of the leading public health specialists in the country, and I've been at the forefront of fighting COVID-19. Uh, Professor, you're very welcome. Thank you, Gavin. Good evening, viewers. Uh, Professor Roda Wanyenze is uh, a public health specialist and uh, currently the dean of... Uh, Makere University School of Public Health. She's done a lot of work to do with um, infectious diseases, research, capacity building and program management in that area. She's very active uh, in public health policy leadership. So I could have no better person to handle our topic tonight, COVID-19 beyond the lockdown. I know we are all very excited after 42 days of being limited to our home spaces. Uh, last Friday, the president led us out of our spaces and uh, we are back to the normal life. But what would this mean for the Ugandan? What would this mean in the light of the pandemic? Yeah, so, Professor, uh, the lockdown has been lifted. And uh, 42 days ago, the numbers of death and uh, daily increase in infections was very, very high. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the 42 days, those numbers have come down. Probably that's what informed the decision of the president to open up. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your take? Uh, where do we go from here? Are we now free to go on with as before? What is your take? Um, first of all, I will start by sincerely extending my sympathies to people out there. Because... Uh, uh, Gavin, there's not going to be anything like a complete normal. Uh, many people out there are hurting. Some are still sick. They have uh, loved ones in the hospital. Some have lost their loved ones. So uh, it's not necessarily going to be uh, a normal, as we would like to call it. And I sincerely extend my sympathies to those who have lost loved ones. And if you're still sick, take heart. Uh, seek help where you need it. And do your very best to be able to recover. Uh, so even as we start this, for those of us who are trying to get out there, we need to know that it's going to be a complex journey to recovery. Mm -hmm. And uh, this complex journey to recovery is a collective effort. Yeah. Uh, COVID is one disease that has really shown us that there's not a single person that's going to take it away. There's not a single institution, even a government will not take it away alone. We need to work together we can actually bring this second wave down. I hesitate to say that it's down, okay. uh, frankly, mm. because um, we've opened at a time when we still have a fairly high seropositivity rate. Mm. We are still above 5%. We are swinging between 5 and about 7%, and sometimes going over that among people who are tested, uh, at, uh, who are positive for COVID. Mm. So we are not yet there. Uh, Prof, before you continue, uh, for the listeners out there, what do you mean by seropositivity rate? I know there are primary school students that are listening, there are secondary school students that are listening, and mothers in the village. What do you mean by that? Still above 5%, yeah. So among people that are tested for COVID, we find that about between 5 to 7 in 100 test positive for COVID. Okay. That still shows that there's a lot of infections going on in the community. When this uh, rate comes down yeah. on average to anything below 5%, then we know that the number of infections out there in the community is reducing. We feel more comfortable that way because as long as there are many people who are infected out there, it means that they are transmitting infection to more and more people. So we are not safe okay. uh, when we still have a fairly high number of people testing positive among those who uh, come forward. So uh, we are still test. above five. So we are still about five, above and, five. And in, in light 100. of that, you can't say second wave is down. In light of that, I feel a bit uncomfortable. We've come significantly down. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and we need to uh, appreciate the efforts towards that. Uh, but we are now out. We are now out. And uh, depending on how we behave, yeah. 
what we do out there, we could likely just get another bump up. Okay. That is very possible. We've mm. seen that in, in the uh, curves for several countries. That graph begins to come down, yeah. and indeed it has steadily really come down. It's not yet touched the bottom. And depending on how we behave, we could actually take it back up. Wow. And we could take it up, and then we continue on mm. an upward trajectory. So we need to do the right things. Okay, uh, and at this point, maybe to the viewer watching us, uh, we've talked about the first wave, second wave, third wave. Is this the language of pandemics? How do pandemics move? Because I know in some countries, like I think across the border in Kenya, they must have gotten a second wave much earlier, to maybe last year. Mm -hmm. So w how does the pandemic move from the start and then what is that phase like? So um, these dynamics of whether you have a wave, uh, an upward or come down, um, really a complex wave that is determined by a number of things. Um, it is determined sometimes by the level of immunity within the population to the disease, to the agent. And uh, we've had terms like sometimes people saying, when there is herd immunity, there will no longer be transmission. That refers to a level of immunity that can't stop transmission within the population. Okay. And that can come either through vaccination or through natural infection. But then sometimes it also depends on the type of virus you are dealing with, mm. the type of disease agent you're dealing with. Um, if I could use the example of COVID, when we started with COVID in Uganda, we started with what we are now calling the alpha variant, you know, yes. and then we had so many little, you know, variations within that, including what we baptized the Ugandan uh, variant. And at this point, we actually think that variant, for example, might not have been as transmissible and also might not have to lead to very severe disease like the one that we have now. Yep. But then enter a different variant, which is the Delta, which we were previously calling the Indian variant. And right now, research in several parts of the world shows that it's easier to transmit. It also leads to more severe disease. So that combination of poor immunity, mm. a more deadly variant, but also our behavior is what precipitated this upward trend. Okay. So when you combine the environment and what we do and the agent, and then you combine it with the level of immunity that we might have, then we have a challenge. So that often leads to this upward rise mm. in cases, especially when there's penetration and widespread uh, uh, transmission at the community level. So that becomes a wave when it is sustained okay. uh, over time, it goes up and then at some point it will come down and again coming down depends on various factors again. Mm. Uh, uh, if for example we improve vaccination and the coverage is much better, we have seen in several countries uh, the wave coming down because of that. Mm. It could be behavior. Wow. Interventions, including locking us down okay. so that we don't move, can bring it down because it reduces the mixing. And once we open up and begin to mix more, especially in large groups where transmission happens, then we could potentially take it up. So this is the reason I'm saying that depending on how we behave, this could be a real downward trend and we could say the second wave is over, but we could also just have a bump and go up. Wow. And Professor, at that point, what would we recommend to Ugandans out there who have gone through the previous second wave? We talked about at the moment, it's about 2,700 Ugandans that have been buried mm -hmm. because of COVID. So how do we, how should Ugandans behave out there? Uh, but first of all, we need to know that we've opened a bit early because of the pressure to survive yeah. because uh, this is not just about covid we got to survive so we've not opened because the, the circumstances out there are very conducive mm. and we just have to remember that all the time yeah. when we opened up after the first wave in uganda we had very few cases we we we, we, we had very few people that had died yeah. it took us many months and close to a year to get anywhere above 500 people are dead but out there now we have so many people uh, that have gone we have many people that are still infected we are no longer picking them up you know uh, with a with a van coming with people fully dressed up and taking them away so they are out there in the community so wherever you go 
there is possibly somebody that is affected. That's right. Whether it's in your workplace, whether it's in the taxi that you're using, whether it's in the workshop that you might want to attend in the near future. So we have to be on the alert and know that COVID is all around us. We have to wear our masks. It's the old song, and some of us are tired of hearing this. But unfortunately, we have to do that. We have to keep distance. Wow. We have to be able to do all the hygiene, mm. and then we must accelerate vaccination. Wow. We have to do that. Mm -hmm. But also, at the same time, prepare in case we have a third wave. Wow. Prepare to improve the care wow. for people who are infected so that we don't lose as many people as we've done wow. in the second wave. Wow. Wow. This is quite very informative and uh, empowering. Professor, thank you so much for those wonderful insights, and I believe we are going to overcome this. Uh, guys that are following in, let's uh, follow our social media handles. That is the Doc Talk Show on Facebook uh, and Twitter, as well as on YouTube. Please, you can type in your questions, and uh, Professor will be able to respond to you ASAP. Uh, right now, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back in a minute, and uh, Professor will pick up from where she has ended. Thank you very much. The Ministry of Health informs the general public that amidst the difficult times of the pandemic, routine immunization for all children under five, those eligible for HPV vaccines, and women of childbearing age is still going on in all our health facilities. Parents and caregivers, take all your children for immunization as per their schedule. All vaccines are safe, effective, and free. Remember to observe the COVID-19 prevention measures as you go for immunization services. Wear a mask properly, covering your mouth and nose. Wash your hands regularly with soap and clean water or use an alcohol-based sanitizer. Maintain a physical distance of at least 2 meters from others and avoid crowds. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from partners. You are watching The Dark Talk Show.